Hi, Sheetal. How are you? Hi. Hi, Devki. How are you? I'm like, I've been looking forward to this. You know, we've rescheduled this thing number of times now and then I'm truly happy to be here right now. I'm so glad and welcome to No Idea Whatsoever. Uh, you know, you obviously had such an incredible journey you know, from uh, being a uh, being a tennis player to then marrying a cricketer to now having your own kids and now becoming a life coach. So I'm sure you have a lot of interesting things to share. Uh, mm-hmm. So my first question, Sheetal, obviously is, you know, did you know what you were going to do when you grew up or did you have no idea whatsoever? Um, Actually, it, I think it just happened. Basically, I mean, to just give you a short background, yeah. Um, my parents got uh, separated when I was like seven years old. So I think, and then me and my brother, my younger brother, um, started living with my dad. And my dad at that point, I think had no idea how to, you know, raise the whole kids. thing between, yeah, raise two kids with working, etc. Yeah. So I think he wanted to buy a few more hours after school. So he just you know, uh, enrolled us into this tennis uh, club that was right next to school. So we would finish school and then just walk to that place. So we'd play for two hours. And then, you know, my dad used to have that extra two hours. So I think it started like that. But it just happened that I think within the first year, I, I don't know, I think I just started playing well. So my dad was like, then... He was like, okay, let me just actually focus on this. Not like it was a plan. You know, it just yeah. happened because of the circumstances of our lives. Yeah. And then you obviously, I mean, so how long did you play for before he actually realized that, you know, this is what you need to do? I started playing, like, because the, I think I started playing at eight. And yeah. I started yeah, I started playing the under 10 tournaments and then, you know, the first tournament I played, I won. So okay. wow. I was like, I was damn excited. <laughs> and so was I, because yeah. suddenly your name in the newspaper and, you know, as a child, it's like, oh, wow, like everybody is like asking me, telling me how great I am. And I think it was just like that momentary thing. So that's how it actually started. It didn't have an agenda, to be honest. Um, but I think when I started playing, I quickly picked up and within two years I started playing for uh, India under under 14 um so it just happened organically in the beginning yeah but like I think post that 11 12 and when I got picked up for India is when my dad was like okay she's gonna fully do this okay so when you were you know sort of focusing on sports so much and you know really I've spoken to so many people in sport and it really is an entire life on its in itself you know it's you have your school but sport really kind of subsumes you into everything that your body requires and plus it takes a lot of uh, mental strength to play you know so how is it coping with school and playing sport at such a you know competitive level? Uh, to be honest i Barely went to school because I was traveling like 40 weeks a year. And yeah. uh, thank God that my school was so supportive. Like my principal then, um, she was extremely supportive. But and they did, you know, everything in their strength to yeah. make sure that I passed. Yeah. And not really like get the education that I, I think I needed to have. Um, so I think I've missed a lot of school. But... Um, I any actually you know when I was traveling I now to just recollect I never felt like there was a difference between me being in class for or not being in class because yeah. all they cared about is um, notes being complete at the end of the year or something on wow. those lines so yeah. I had this section where they used to get my notes you know fully done uh, and it just that in the end I had to study and pass. But funnily, I, I I don't think I should be saying this, but no, you must <laughs> from fourth standard yeah. to the tenth standard when there was board exam. I have never given it. So okay, I, wow, I lucky you. 
but today it's a system right and like i didn't get into that rat race but you know it was like that and um, but because i was traveling so much um only for because 10th was the i think the board exams right so yes. because of it i had to give so the only reason i probably even wrote that exam because of that um yeah. but coping was hard like i would dread going to school you know and i think you know this is one of the questions i asked robin who happens to before everybody to be your husband and he mentioned that you know obviously if you're playing sport and you want to pursue that the curriculum for a sports person should be very different and actually gear them up for what they need outside of just the sport i.e. life skills emotional intelligence you need so much mental strength you need uh, public speaking skills just overall language enhancement and development for financial literacy i mean how do you manage money at that age you know when you're when you're you're making money sooner than most people because you're winning prizes and competitions and things like that so what is your view on that you know just having a different curriculum for for yourself would what would you have wanted your school to or not just this i don't think it's just the school i think it's the overall uh, system what do you think the system should have given you that you didn't get growing up i i mean you know the first thing that stands out for me today you know i yeah. like because i have not really gone to school yeah but all that i have learned all that i have actually gathered is because of the exposure you know that i've had through traveling you know Correct. playing itself yeah but there is a part which i think was a lack for me was one definitely like i think as uh, as robert has mentioned nobody taught me how to be confident when i go and you know probably yeah. even speak in front of somebody you know yeah or how like i think for me math has been such a block in my head because <laughs> yeah. it was oh this plus this has to be this and if you yeah. like that answer you're going to get max what i truly believe has to be worked on and especially with kids today is i think the personality the social yeah. skill yeah i you know because for me i'm like okay i went to school i had social skills but nobody actually corrected me if yeah. i was doing nobody guided me anything for that matter you know i yeah. really just what turned out turned out you know uh so i just truly believe that no matter i think every subject there has to be an agenda to implement it in probably outside of classroom yeah outside the yeah. classroom yeah and i think Absolutely. to find a way to do that yeah um, ah i think because i feel like i you know i'm a i am a graduate but i like if i have to connect anything from there to here i cannot Yeah and I think this is one of the things we teach at Instruco you know personality development is such an important component uh yeah. in every sphere of life you know whether you're playing a sport whether you're interviewing whether you're interviewing for a school whether you're out just socially especially you know there's so much uh that you need to know in today's day and age in order to just even be good enough you know every like these days you meet kids and they're like wow i didn't know 10% of what this kid knows today but what yeah. they what, but what's still lacking really is that confidence you know that so very few kids will have that a, ve- a lot of kids need help with that and even now while well, schools are trying to implement certain processes these things are still i would say the last priority the first priority is you know what is your grade right what how have you performed what grade have you got and there's still that thing that stigma of i've come first in my class or second in my class but you may come first academically but in terms of your personality enhancement your confidence you may not even come in the top 10 or 20 you know so i feel like even the grading needs to be an overall system and more project based in different spheres as opposed to you know you've come first because you got 100 on 100 yes, so yes, and similar to you i had such a fear of math as well because uh, you know i was just like why am i doing algebra like why am i doing trigonometry what what no, am i doing? <laughs> why i don't even care about the sine and cos what am i doing in my life you know so it's a, it's a, it is definitely something i feel that needs to change and that's why you know we try and um keep things as relevant as possible or teach teach kids through stories that talk about real life topics you know to really prep them for outside the classroom um but tell me you know you have you know you obviously have two kids what is it and they're going to schools and they were in schools in india how is firstly the indian education system for you 
and now they're in Dubai. So tell me about that. What is the difference that you really see in them? Oh, actually, we moved, I think, at the right time. So my older one, who is now six years old, he went, actually, I was lucky to have a good school in uh, Bangalore, which was yeah. a school, actually. Okay. Uh, but my, my actually, to be honest, my my second one though started school here. Again, she's in, you know, uh, like a play school, but again, so well structured. And my son, see, I think I I knew of, because my friend's kids went to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of how, the, how it, uh, you know, how, how it um, is functioning. Yeah. But I think just by the know-how of it, today when my son goes to school, one big thing that I see is there's no grade uh, system there's no like first rank second rank that's how it was and nobody you know feels like oh someone is better than better. the other yeah or superior than the other and especially yes. at that age you know I think uh, I don't know why it's not noticed that like at that age when you feel like you've not done well compared to somebody already hits your confidence you know absolutely and it's from such a you know root level that you feel like you know, not good enough. Yeah, yeah, not good enough. And then no matter what you do, it's still a struggle to get over this, resolve this, to actually experience confidence wholly, you know. Uh, yeah. But I think like here, like I see that there is a, so say even in, say in a class of 20, 25, if there are few kids or many kids who are not in par with um, the other kids in a certain subject, so they have, they recognize that and then they make sure that that set of kids are given that extra attention in that subject. And somebody else could be, you know, uh, a little weaker in something else. So they focus on what needs to be focused on. And it's never that they are in competition for anything, you know. Yeah. So I think everybody feels like, hey, everybody's doing the same. And it could be reading, writing, math, whatever it is. And they... I think and they make groups where knowingly and unknowingly they help each other. One who, who who's better and the other who's better at something else. I've seen that there's a system where they bring different subjects together to as if like this one's teaching the other one. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's all hype happening very very organically. You know, my my son seems to be better at this and not something else, but it's made to feel like he's teaching the other kid something and yeah. the other kid is even space you know yeah absolutely uh, so I just felt like that was amazing because I never experienced that you know because yeah. I always last in class because of not knowing half the things yeah and, uh, yeah so it, I think it's just the system is I at least here I yeah. cannot complete the system in India right now because my kids didn't go you know to school enough for me to say it but from whatever I see, I've seen, like I actually have discussed with a lot of my friends who are parents. Yeah. It's pretty much the same, but maybe just upgraded in a few ways. But the system of learning still remains, you know, um, which I feel like is not the greatest thing for an individual and as a country even, right? And why is it that we are the smartest, probably the country and Still, when you go out there, the confidence yeah. comes large. You know, Absolutely. And I've seen that through and through. I see it even here. It's like you know you're better, but you, you just don't have it to go and stand yeah. there doing that, you know? Yeah, um, and I think that comes from a deep-rooted sense of being very careful about uh, everything, you know, uh, of, of being right. In India, if you know, if for the culture is very much, for example, if you're wrong, you won't admit it, or there's some sort of embarrassment in being wrong, or some sort of embarrassment in asking, hey, I don't know this, tell me what it is. And I've seen this, and this happens even at work, you know, so many of uh, so many people when we do team meetings, etc., if they don't know something, uh, they won't, many of them will not say they don't know it. They'll say, yeah, yes, I don't know. I'm just like, just say, I don't know. And it's okay. There's no shame in not knowing something. You can't know everything. And that's why yeah. when you're abroad, everything is more question-based learning. Here, there's a teacher telling you, okay, this is what you need to learn. 
you know, and, and obviously you're allowed to ask questions, but still the format is not question-based learning. There's no sort of uh, independent critical thinking that is embedded in you where you're like, you you ask a question that you probably don't feel so silly about asking because in, in your mind, that's a fair question. Yeah, actually that that's very true because um, uh, I think um, in Indian schools, I mean, no, I guess it's not all. I think yeah, schools are actually trying to, you know, make it more, um, I think the, they're trying to align with the systems outside. Uh, but I feel like the, yeah, like you rightly said, it's it's just taught apparently and it's expected for the whole class or whatever to it understand. is to understand it the same way. Yes. And, they, and in their heads, it's like, this is simple. This is the basic. They should get it. Maybe 10 kids got it, but the other 10, yeah. Like I have never, like if I have to ask a question, in the few times that have gone to school yeah and chance, or even the other way around like if they have asked me and I don't know I have been made like made to stand on the bench like you know because how can you not know this like this is basic yeah, you know? yeah. I'm like, oh it doesn't seem basic in my head <laughs> you know exactly and then the next time you're scared you're like you know even though I don't know this I'd rather not ask because then I'm gonna have to stand on the bench <laughs> yeah really yeah, no, there is a huge, and I think more than this really tells us that the teachers need to be trained and the teachers make such a big difference, right? And I keep saying this repeatedly, like a broken record that, I mean, I've had teachers teaching me subjects that I could never imagine liking. And I love those subjects. Because you spend so much time with them and you're learning from them. Yeah. And which you're trusting them with the information shared. And yeah. I feel like teachers have such a huge responsibility. Absolutely in creating these kids i feel like or yeah the name, i tell you know. yeah and you know one more thing that you know we keep talking about in struco is really promoting independent learning because even now you know we have some parents who sit in the class with the child and you know will literally nudge the child and say why don't you know this or why don't you you know and it, you can see that it puts a lot of pressure on the child and sometimes children are doing, you know, um, they're scared to, to ask questions from the parents sometimes. And I feel like independent learning is so important where you just let your child be in the class just and it's not like in school you can control what's happening, right? So why are you controlling it outside also? Yeah. So how do you inculcate independent? I'm sure you are doing that. So I'm not going to ask you, do you do it? Because I know you do it for, for sure. <laughs> but how do you inculcate that in, in your kids? So, I mean, to be very honest, it's like <laughs> the only time I get into there, whatever, is because he he gets a set of homework that comes at the yeah. end of the week. And uh, it's just like, you know, touching upon all that they have learned. So both Robin and I do not like to sit with him. We just, you know, make sure, you know, now he has started reading. Like yeah. last year, he was still learning to read. So yeah. we're like, okay, get the things please like figure it out because you must have learned this so many a times he's actually not done the homework because he's actually not able to do it on his own so we have sent back the same thing and not just write an answer based on us what telling you, because most parents and i'm going to take the liberty of saying that would actually just to sake of uh just for the sake of getting the homework done would just dictate it and say, okay, now, you know, you can go and submit it. But if they actually started sending homework back saying, you know, my child didn't know this. So why should I make them do it? It would change the entire perspective from the teacher's side and make the teacher really rethink that, listen, maybe I'm teaching something incorrectly that say this child is not, or not incorrectly. Well, or this child hasn't been able to comprehend what I'm teaching, but that, so how do the teachers react to that in, in the no, middle East? No, no. Yeah, so I think here they're very open. So in fact, like they have told us that let them do it, you know, but, you know, obviously help them with, you know, just putting it out in a structure where they can, you know, but there's a homework. Uh, yeah. Book. They have to put the map here, English here, whatever. Yeah. But it goes back, in fact, like they make sure um, that whatever they're not able to do is focused on, you know. Correct. And, and funnily, I've seen over time, that what he was not able to even say read or it could be phonics, it could be math, it could be something else. Like like just last week. And I, I suddenly feel like, oh, he's 
he's understanding this now. Yeah. And before, he's like, oh, these are red words. These are this words. And I'm like, oh, like something he didn't know, like say three weeks ago. Yeah. So what have they not done? They know that he's not able to do on his own because homework is not for us. It's for them, right? And is that so, just you or do other parents there? Like I'm sure you have, you know, groups of moms you speak with. Do they do the same thing? I think yes, because that's been kind of not directly communicated to us, but it's just that do not do the homework for them. Let that's them really do the good. Homework. Yeah. So that's very clear. So obviously, like what is that? Their parents, I've I've heard and seen that they send notes saying, Oh my god, my child doesn't know this. Please yeah. make sure that you please them. They probably send back notes. Yeah. And other than that, they don't complete it for sure. I know that. And, you know, uh, this is obviously one type of parenting. And then there's another type where, you know, they just like parents just don't let their children be uh, independent. They just are constantly hounding them to do things. You know, since you're a life coach, I'm asking this question because obviously you speak to so many people from different walks of life. What what is your advice for such people? I think the previous generations did that to us where, you know, there has to be this way, that way. And I just feel like it limits human beings, you know, to actually explore what they're capable of because yeah. you're always going by someone telling you what to do and yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And what if, what if me as a child or my child as who is, is able to do or think or be better than what I imagine to be. And for to know that the only way is to give them the freedom to make decisions, take responsibility, yeah, uh, and make mistakes. I think, to be honest, I think everybody's scared to let their kids make mistakes. Yeah, and I think that absolutely yes, almost like an issue that I see because, like, what's going to happen if you make a mistake? You learn and you try to better it. But yeah, it becomes a big deal for a lot of people that. Also, that's because I feel um, uh, that I see consistently is people, especially parents, take uh, kids' behaviors, kids' actions, inactions as their embarrassment. Absolutely. As if, and that I feel is, no, wrong. And for me, that is like something everybody needs to be aware of because you can't make a child feel like Oh my God, if you do this, if you th throw a tantrum somewhere, I'm embarrassed. And then because of which, yeah, which means you have a problem yeah. to deal with what the situation is or whatever yeah. it is. And yeah, absolutely. It has nothing to do with the child. And yeah. I feel awareness is a big lack. Um, and that's almost is like, you know, as a child, it must, I, I luckily I have not gone through that because my dad was, like somebody who would just always make sure that no matter what I do, it's fine. And yeah. I don't worry about what people think, you know. And these things require very real conversations with kids and, and, a, and a certain amount of openness, right? How do you do that? Uh, how do you have that communication channel where you know that uh, no matter what your child has done, even if he's scared that, you know, oh, I did something wrong or how how do you make sure that they always come and communicate with you? What do you do for that? Because again, that's something parents really struggle with. Yeah, I think, see, what Rob and me have done is that one thing, make, make sure that they have the freedom to come and talk to us. Like you have to create that space where they're not scared to come and talk to you. You know, firstly, yeah. I think it's starts with that. Because if they feel like I can go say whatever it is and it's not like, oh my God, I'm, there's going to be some huge repercussion or, like for it. I think when kids are growing up, there's a stage where they're exploring, you know, uh, lying, they're exploring manipulation, they're exploring because they're also figuring things out. And then I think we made it a rule that no matter what, you have to tell us the truth. And I feel like he also like didn't trust it, you know, fully yeah. initially. Because he's like, he knows he's done wrong because he figured it. But he's trying how it feels to probably manipulate. And But I think my, one of the things that we've also learned along the way is when they come and tell you the truth, no matter how wrong it looks or how... Yeah, that's the time you need to... Is, you yeah. have to, number one, 
accept that yes and and because they have told us the truth appreciate them and acknowledge the fact that you know we are really grateful for the truth that has been shared yeah and teach them that hey maybe this is not the right way to do it because this can hurt people this can whatever it is yeah right? but i think that one of the most basic things is to create trust between the parent and the child that the child is not scared and this is again you know something of course as parents you know you have we have to do but also in school they really have to implement things around uh, you know teaching them empathy patience kindness being honest so many important uh, things that you know are critical to to have in today's day and age and for you sheetal you know what is what are some of the important uh, i would say skills i also you know subjects that you think are very important for them so i feel like yeah, i was just going to say like i don't think i have any critical subject that yeah. you know it's not like you want him to become a doctor yeah, which is, <laughs> yeah. which was every because parent's dream at some point i mine didn't so thank <laughs> god for that uh, but i feel like it's um, i i do both robin and me that's i think that's our you know base that let them explore and figure what they want to do you yeah. know and for all you know it could not be anything to do with school it could be a sport it could be an instrument it could be something else they're good at yes. but this probably just i think gives you the base education and then you know there's so much more than education right and like you rightly said you know you learn to um, coexist with probably kids that you like and kids that you don't like yeah. or you know still being able to be there and um go through the day feeling whatever and i feel like one is of course i think schools have to um in like somehow teach empathy kindness yeah. um how to recover from a fight how to recover yes. when you're feeling, when you're having a bad day or how to deal with it and how to treat another if somebody is having a bad day yeah. um you know those are the most basic things because every, we're not going to have a good day all the time right and at the end of the day we are human beings and i feel like that needs to be focused on but then as i don't have any favorite subjects or so actually at home i think they are with like they're sheltered right at the end of the day yeah and they have a certain capability um demeanor that they have at home but without their knowledge i think without their actual conscious mind they get into another state when they're in school when they're somewhere else and then classes and i feel those are all the actual learning spaces and i think one one more thing of obviously like you rightly said is to understand yourself um and and that we have to do at every age stage uh every relationship we react so differently to different things and that's one thing i wish i learned in school you know like how do you understand yourself like or how do you focus on what you're thinking about sometimes we fight our own feelings and you know say that even though i'm feeling this i shouldn't you know but really to understand these things and then the other thing you know to do with this is to be able to effectively communicate what you're thinking and i think that's another thing that we don't really teach uh, or talk about uh because again it's you know we we are all some and i and honestly i face this even at work and i'm sure everyone relationships and i'm sure again like you know you're a life coach you need so many people that their intentions may be 100% correct but because of that communication gap they have just made a mess out of something they wanted to say because they just couldn't communicate it properly because we don't know how to like we just don't know how to communicate we don't know how to sort of express our feelings in the correct way and this is something if you learn as a child you know you will it'll it's like how they say every day if you meditate every day you know you'll be calmer you'll be more patient but this should be one of the classes in school that listen you have to learn to communicate every single day of your life so that by the time you're 30 or 35 or 40 you have mastered that art <laughs> you know and you know how to communicate with everybody i think that's uh, such a important aspect honestly yeah in fact robin and me uh keep <laughs> laughing about it because I have a certain way of communicating which he feels is the most complicated way. I am like, this is how I understand it, you know. And yes. I feel like it has to be. I don't know. I just feel like 
again, the communication, I think, comes from, see, I mean, I think one can communicate better than the other or, yeah. you know, more confidently. All that, again, comes down to, I think, how a person is made to feel sure. and the confidence that's uh, given. Uh, and I feel like it's all interconnected that yeah. I think the personality development uh, is so important and I feel like schools have that space to actually do it with number of kids and then you know and each one's strength is going to be different and yeah. but to make each one feel like they are their best selves and to actually um, acknowledge their own um greatness and their you know flaws their you know weaknesses and make it normal I think yeah. like you know there's almost like I think while growing up I had this image um that at all times you needed to be correct that at all times you needed to say things correctly you know it's like almost like otherwise you're judged as oh she doesn't know or yeah it could, but and I see that that's constant everywhere. So it's like you have to say the right things at all times. You have to look, the, you know, look a certain way uh, at all times. Yeah. And I feel like it's stressful. And you're always questioning yourself as to what do I say for it to seem right in this yeah. place, in this in different spaces. And I feel like it shouldn't be like that, you know. Yeah. Just let people, I think, teach kids to be themselves regardless of which space they are in and yeah I just feel like that needs to be taught yeah and I think one thing that you know with you saying all this comes to my mind is that when kids are also or for example even for adults we're always categorized as introverts and extroverts and then there's a there's a real category like, oh, he's an introvert. He doesn't speak much. She's an extrovert. She's always talking. She's quite, you know, vivacious. What is your definition of it in the in a really technical sense? Because people really mistake the definition of an introvert and an extrovert. Yeah, see, I, I just truly believe that I don't think there are introverts and extroverts. I don't even believe in that concept, honestly. I just feel like who each person chooses to share their thought or yeah. not. And some want to put it out and maybe have a discussion about it. And some, you know, they just want to keep their uh, thought or opinion or whatever it is to themselves. And they're not the kinds who want to share. And yeah. which is fine. And it doesn't categorize them into something, you know. Yeah. And I just it becomes such a big deal. Oh, she's an introvert, so she won't talk. He's a yeah. extrovert, so he will talk. And also, you know, funny, I've always been called uh, an extrovert. But it almost creates pressure wherever I go. Yeah, for you to I be... am, I'm supposed to deliver something, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't feel like talking today, you know. But if they go, something's wrong. I like, no, I just don't feel like talking, you know. Yeah. But so, and then, you know, I think mm -hmm. it's time for me to take a step back and say, I don't need to participate in this. You know, I don't yeah. need to take responsibility for their expectation, you yeah. know. And so in between, I've heard this, oh, you've changed a lot. I'm like, well, I'm just being who I want to be. Well, change know? is the only constant in life, as they say. Yeah. So that's also fine. And yeah. what is your advice for young parents, professional, you know, young working parents now um, to really, uh, you know, again, I think bring up their children in the best possible way on the most, I would say, um, in a way where they can really inculcate independent learning and let them really, you know, sometimes children's personalities also get curbed because the parents can be quite overpowering or sort of dominating. So what is your advice just overall for parents? I mean, I, I don't think I, I, I can give advice, but I think and you're from, a life coach, so surely you give advice all the time when people talk. Yeah, each each one has their own way of parenting, and you have to respect that because yeah. it's based on their individuality and uh, parents as um you know unit. Um, also, uh, the every household is different, you know. Yeah. So, and I just feel like the the core of everything is how the child feels and 
is the child in a good space at all times and he, he is is the child able to be themselves you yeah. know be, is is he given the is he or she given the space to express themselves yeah. you know i i know so many people who cannot emote cannot express what they feel and that is because they were they were never allowed as you know yeah. kids to do that they were just told this is right this is wrong and i yeah. feel like that's one thing that parents should i think if there's any so called advice that i can give is that there is truly there's wrong and right is what you believe you know in and it's not everybody's right and everybody's wrong yeah. and i just give that space for the child to express and be there when they have something to share yeah and don't take it personally i feel because everybody it's so common to see that every everything happens personally yeah you know don't take it personally i feel like just accept that okay this is the thought process of your child and it's yeah. different from it's fine and in fact i think we should be proud that they're not just following what we did you know they yeah. they're they far superior than us and let them give or, or be a part of the journey where they can truly be themselves yeah and one thing again and you know that everyone really talks about is emotional intelligence but how do you build that like what do you how do you see how you help your children build that i i see for me i think everything roots to awareness and i feel the minute as adults as kids as anyone i feel like if you have awareness you're automatically like you're just doing everything better because you're not doing things mindlessly you know yeah. you're not doing things without being without having a thought to it it's not like random act- actions and i think that's a practice it's not like something that just happens like yeah. oh in the weird person no it's practice and i think the younger we uh, make them get into spaces where they need to be aware of um their actions in spaces with people especially where there is friction or where there is you know a discomfort for them and i think keep like being that shadow where you're just helping them to be aware helping them to be aware until it becomes a part of them cuz even today as adults i meet like so many people who have like they have, everything is like more like out of not even instinct it's out of habit yeah absolutely not because hey this is the thing that works for me you know and the lack of awareness is crazy and it's i don't know how like you know every single person is going to change this because eventually we, we all have to because yeah. otherwise just living a life and not actually um experiencing it as as you probably yeah, could yeah that's so, you you're so right about that yeah so i just feel like it's it's that awareness that you keep building and then yeah. again feel like it leads to cuz each person i think each child will flourish to be what they are capable of and we just have to be there as somebody we you know obviously we as parents we are always trying to protect them and as long as you know that that's the intention i think let, let them explore and yeah. that space be creating you know awareness yeah and i think uh, you know this shital has been such an informative um, episode where you have talked about all these interesting things that as a parent you are experiencing this first hand talking about it and you know you yourself went through life with one parent and it's definitely not easy and sometimes you know people go the other way but you have really learned from that and and then really sort of implemented that in your life to give the best you can to your kids so thank you so much for coming and uh, you know it was really nice to have you here thank you thank you and i think it just felt so nice to actually share like a lot of things because even i kind of realized a lot of things that made me aware yeah. of certain actions and then yeah absolutely 